views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Fashionista's Home Edition. I am your host, Clarissa Bello. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We trust that you and your loved ones are well and staying safe. On today's Benya's Fireside Chat conversation, we welcome housing attorney and vice president at the Dominican Bar Association, who will speak to us about COVID-19 pandemic and New York City rent freeze now. Is there a rent freeze? And what does that mean to tenants and landlords? Please join me as I welcome housing attorney and vice president at the Dominican Bar Association, Atenodoro Gonzalez. Atenodoro, thank you so much. It is a pleasure to have you. Now, what is it, Atenodoro, that you do as a housing attorney? Thank you for having me here. Um, you know, I say my name is Atenodoro Gonzalez, and I'm currently the vice president of the Dominican Bar Association, um, and I'm also a housing attorney at Legal Services in the Bronx. Um, a little bit about what I do, um, I represent low-income tenants in the Bronx community um, in cases against their landlords. So if your landlord is suing you for non-payment of rent, if your landlord is suing you to get evicted from your house, um, you know, we represent you. We also bring cases on behalf of tenants against their landlords, which is a lot more of what I'm doing now. Um, we represent entire buildings against case, uh, for cases against their landlords. For example, if your landlord is harassing you, if they're taking advantage of you by abusing you know, tax credits and raising your rents, or if they're just not making repairs in your apartment or in your building, we help you know, you know, you know, sue landlords so that you know, they do these repairs and make these apartments and these buildings available for their tenants and to stop you know, tenant harassment. What has the government done so far with the rent freeze? And is there really a rent freeze at the Nodono? Unfortunately, right now, um, there is no rent freeze in effect. What the governor's moratorium on eviction does is it prevents landlords and city marshals from enacting on judgments to evict tenants at the moment. Um, you know, they've also put a pause on any kind of housing court proceedings for evictions. So if you're a tenant that's not paying your rent, um, you're not in, you know, in fear of eviction at the time. Um, it was only a 90-day moratorium. It's coming up in the middle. It's going to end in the middle of May, so it's coming up soon. Um, and we really need to see some sort of action either by the governor or by the city legislature um, to kind of, you know, do something to either freeze rent or extend the moratorium. You know, as a moratorium is not a rent freeze, that means your rent, unfortunately, is still due. And even though the CARES Act came into effect and as, you know, done, um, you know there is a forbearance on mortgage payments, um, it does not affect uh, residential buildings for landlords. So, for example, if you live in a pretty large building, most likely your landlord is not. Um, there's no, there's no forbearance on your landlord's payment mortgage payments during this period of time. There is a forbearance on mortgage payments for private homes, or if your landlord lives in the building, then maybe that could count for a moratorium on the mortgages. But as it stands, there is no moratorium on mortgages. However, there are no foreclosures happening, um, and there are no evictions happening. Um, but because the, you know, the mortgages still have to be paid, rent still has to be paid. Um, your building taxes still have to be paid. The super still has to be paid if he's being paid. Uh, materials to do repairs, you know, that, that comes out of the rent money. And unfortunately, you know, we don't have a rent freeze. So, you know, landlords still have to pay a lot of these expenses. Um, and even though this is a temporary fix with, this, with uh, the moratorium on evictions, you know, we are gonna start seeing um, a lot of issues coming up once the moratorium is lifted. Um, if the, the governor doesn't extend it or if the legislature doesn't do anything to um, alleviate these issues for the tenants. Is there really a cancellation? Is it really, really happening? Like, how is that going to be affecting everyone at the end of the day, right. especially the landlords, right? So, you know, everyone is fighting for, you know, this rent freeze because it means more than just freezing your rent. Um, in order to enact the rent freeze, they also have to put in protections for landlords because they're the ones that have to pay the banks and these taxes on all of these buildings. 
or rent freeze will come in with a moratorium on foreclosures on all of these residential properties. We'll also come in with a freeze on the payment of taxes for these buildings. It will come in on the freeze of mortgage payments that these landlords have to make um, to the banks. You know, and a big chunk of the rent that comes in for these tenants goes to these mortgage payments. They go to these taxes that they have to pay to the city. And some of the things that the city legislature is trying to do um, in terms of protecting, for example, commercial businesses is um, exemptions and waivers of taxes that they would be paying the city normally. So in order for them to do a rent freeze, I foresee that they will be waiving a lot of these taxes and putting in some sort of incentives to sort of help landlords cope with the loss of income from rents um, so that they can continue to provide essential services for their tenants. Um, whether it's in the form of a tax abatement, whether it's in the form of HRA, for example, which is you know, city welfare, um, stepping in and, you know, making payments on behalf of tenants. You know, there are ways that they can do it and they're trying to figure out how best to operate it and to start this. Um, but it is, a, you know, a trickle down effect, not paying your rent affects, not just your rent payments, it affects your landlords, it affects your housing, your living, um, you know, the supers who work in your building, the employers that work for the landlord. Um, you know, being able to work from home is a privilege that not a lot of people have. And if they're not able to work and they're not getting paid, I mean, more than just rent isn't going to be paid. Bills aren't going to be paid. You know, money is not going to be coming into the economy. Um, the last thing anybody wants is for the same thing to happen back in 2008 with another housing crash. Um, mm -hmm. So the city and the governor and the mayor, they really need to come together. And, you know, it looks like at least you know now um, something will be coming down the pipeline to sort of alleviate all of this stress and these problems for tenants and landlords. I know that recently Mayor de Blasio had called Governor Cuomo uh, and, rent gun and the Rent Guidelines Board uh, to allow tenants to use their security deposit to be able to pay for May's rent. What does that mean? Like, how is it, is rent being deferred? You know, unfortunately, we still don't have that rent freeze, which is what everyone's fighting for. What Mayor de Blasio is doing by allowing tenants to use the security deposits to pay May's rent, this sort of alleviating a bit of the burden off of tenants um, for the month of May by allowing them to dip into that security deposit to pay their rent. Unfortunately, we're not sure what that's going to mean in the future. Um, you know, by law, your landlord is allowed to have a security deposit from you. And even if you use some of it now to pay your rent, you still have to keep that security deposit on the account. So they can charge you for that security deposit in the future. There is exactly... Um, you know, the, the mayor hasn't done anything to kind of uh, change that. So even if, you know, it's used for May, after May comes, you know, they can still, you know, add that onto your rent in the future. While they can't sue you in housing court once everything is done for security deposits, they can bring actions against you in Supreme Court um, to recover security deposits from you. Um, so that is a problem. I do think that, you know, there's a, there are issues with not paying your rent. Um, even though it is something that right now is very sensitive because a lot of folks aren't working right now and don't have the ability to pay their rent. But not paying your rent has a lot of consequences. Um, it affects your credit report. You know, your landlord can report to the credit bureaus that you, you're not paying your rent, which then lowers your credit score. Uh, in the future, once cases are brought onto housing court, we don't even know if COVID is going to be a valid defense in housing court. You know, judges can, you know, you have defenses in court when your landlord sues you for non payment of rent, whether it's the fact that, you know, your landlord is not making repairs in your apartment, they're charging you the incorrect rent. Um, there are tax credits that aren't being applied, but COVID, you know, this is the first time we're seeing this, is not a valid defense at the moment. And we don't know how that's going to affect tenants once they do go to housing court. Um, so I think that if you can pay your rent, um, you should make every effort to do so, if not your full amount, partial payments. Um, I'm sure landlords aren't going to be, you know, too upset if you're not making the full payment, um, considering that there are a lot of people that aren't going to be able to pay their rent. Um, but it is a lasting effect, unfortunately, on a lot of our, our most vulnerable communities, um, because you have low income folks, you have immigrants who aren't working because the restaurants are closed, the bars and the clubs are closed, they're not able to go to work, and therefore they're not able to pay their rent. Um, it is going to be a big problem and you know this is just uh, an alleviation for the moment with using your security deposit to pay the rent um, but june's going to come up and once june hits you know we don't have security deposit to rely on anymore what are tenants going to do which is why we're really pushing for rent freezes 
we're pushing for changes in the legislature so that you know tenants um, are alleviated of this burden. And so at the same time, landlords get alleviated of their burdens. And so we're able to continue to function as a society um, because this is not something that's, you know, is not looking good right now. Now, what is the approach that, that they've decided to take in order to alleviate renters and even housing mortgages from, from this chaos that we live in right now? So there are proposals on the table. For example, one of the biggest ones is prevention of eviction cases. Um, until April of 2021, which is a full 12 months away from us. Um, I don't know exactly if that's something that's going to get passed. If it does get passed, there has to be something in the lines of, of a rent freeze, of uh, incentives to waive mortgages and tax payments, because it's, it's not possible um, to expect landlords to continue to own a building where they're not able to collect rents from their tenants. Uh, you know, some of the things that they, but these are, this is all on the table. They haven't voted on any of this yet. Um, you know, hopefully the voting happens soon and they do bring some of this, you know, forward that gets signed. Um, some other stuff that they're trying to put forward is prevention of harassment for tenants um, because of COVID. So for example, if you're someone who was laid off because of Corona, if you're someone who is an essential worker, if you're someone who was exposed, uh, making sure that your landlord can't harass you. Um, it's very general right now. There isn't any kind of specifics on what the harassment would be. Harassment in the law is also very general. It can be anything such as um, sending letters to your apartment, you know, I'm trying to talk to you in, while you're in front of other people, other neighbors, um, spreading your information without your permission. Um, it's very broad right now, and there isn't like a big sense of what that entails, but at least we know that they're trying or they're trying to put in something to protect our most vulnerable. Um, and make sure that they're protected during this period of time. Um, the fact that they're considering um, a moratorium on evictions until April of next year also leads me to wonder how long we think we might be in this situation. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us were not expecting to be working from home for more than maybe a few weeks. Um, we're already hitting over a month, at least in my office, where we've been working from home. And a lot of us have been adapting to it and making, you know, adapting to the changes of it. Um, you know, we can also talk about housing court and how housing court and all of the other courts are adapting to these changes. Um, we're seeing a real big shift and a big change to allowing everyone to work from home that's possible to work from home. Um, but we don't know um, how long this is going to be affected, how long we're going to be working from home if we can, how long businesses are going to be shut down. And you see uncertainty of all of this that just makes it really scary for us because we don't know. Our legislature doesn't know, our mayor and governor don't know, our president doesn't know. Um, scientists don't even know when we're gonna be able to get a vaccine for this, for this virus. So we just don't know what's gonna happen in the future, how long we're gonna be here. And I think that uncertainty is what's delaying a lot of change, excuse me, a lot of changes um, and passing of bills to, to alleviate some of this is because we just don't know how long it's gonna last for. We will take a quick break and we will be back with more on Brent Freeze. Don't go anywhere. TV news, radio reports, and newspaper headlines in the 1970s and 80s misrepresented communities in the borough of the Bronx. Then, something transformative happened. By, for, and about the Bronx, BronxNet was born. We are BronxNet! BronxNet provides media education, opening the doors to competitive careers in the media industry for thousands of students in middle school, high school, and college. BronxNet. <laughs>
built a media network for you. Bronxnet TV. Come learn in your new state-of-the-art studios at Lehman College. At Mercy College. And coming soon to the South Bronx in the Hub. Inspire with your stories, culture, history. Your Bronx on Bronxnet. Engage with us. Connect with us at your channels and at Bronxnet.tv. Learn. Engage. Inspire. Bronxnet TV. From the Bronx to the world. <laughs> Bronxnet. <laughs> Welcome back at the Nodoro. As you know, non-essential workers have, um, have been put out of their jobs. And of course, there's uh, those that get paid from, pay from paycheck to paycheck. And then there's those in the gig economy that are, are not working at the moment. Um, what programs are available at the moment uh, uh, to tenants? And is there a rent? Freeze program? So at the moment, if you're someone who's not working and you're not able to pay your rent and you don't have an income coming into your house, um, HRA, which is the Welfare Agency of New York, um, has opened up its doors electronically. So folks can go to access HRA, which is their online portal, um, and they can apply for public assistance for help for rent payments, for food stamps. Um, they can apply for normal public assistance without having the need to go to a welfare center um, I don't know if anyone here has ever been to a welfare office before, but when you go to apply, you're going to be there for a good three or four hours just waiting to get called. Um, so opening up these online portals has really helped um, a lot of low-income people, people who have lost their jobs, um, to apply for these programs. You know, and you're getting food stamps not just for yourself, but you're also getting them for the members of your household if you have minor children. You're also eligible for several certain rent rental programs um, if you do have minor children in the household. Um, and they have alleviated a lot of the burdens and barriers for applying for them. So if you are someone who's lost your job, you know, you're waiting for unemployment to kick in and you don't have food at home, you can apply for food stamps. You know, depending on your borough, there's also a ton of free, you know, food pantries that are available for people uh, where you're able to go and pick up groceries and get food you know, sent to your home, um, especially if you're disabled. Now, in terms of a rent freeze, you know, until the legislature passes something, we don't have one. But there are programs that a lot of people aren't taking advantage of to freeze your rent. If you're a senior citizen or if you're disabled, um, there's a program called SCREE and DREE. SCREE is for senior citizens. DREE is for folks that have disabilities. Um, and you're able to freeze your rent so your rent doesn't continue to increase every year um, if you fall under those categories. For senior citizens, I believe you have to be over 55 years of age. Um, and for DREE, you have to have some sort of disability. You have to be receiving something like SSI or SSD or um, have some sort of medical disability that you're not able to work. Um, you know, these programs are available. They, you know, people do use them. But I think now, especially because of everything that's happening, um, you really should take advantage of what's available for you and apply for these services. Um, now, my office at Legal Services, you know, we are doing callbacks and hotline um, clinics. So if you do have questions about what you qualify for, um, we opened up this clinic about a few days ago. And in just two days, we received over 100 calls from Bronx and um, uh, residents of New York City um, seeking help and assistance and not knowing you know, what programs are available. Um, so if you if you know someone or if you are someone who falls into these categories, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, I think at the end of this, I'll put in the, the phone number that you can call. Um, and you can speak to an advocate from our office and even legal aid and all the other um, nonprofit organizations in New York, they're doing very similar things and you're able to you know, locate and get the assistance that you need. Also, what are the rights for tenants? So even though at the moment, a lot of courts are closed um, for non-essential matters, um, courts in Hallie's for Housing Court are still open for emergency situations. So there are two types of cases that you can hear when you go to housing court now. You can bring what's called an HP action, which is where the tenant sues the landlord um, because of either repairs or harassment. And then there's illegal lockout proceedings. This happens when your landlord illegally evicts you without going to the court first. Now, as we know, there's a moratorium on eviction, so your landlord should not be evicting you. But in the event that you come home and your door is locked or your landlord tries to force you out of a home, it does not matter if you're living in an apartment or if you're living in a private house, if you're living in a rented room, you have these rights. 
you can go to housing court, whether you're in the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, uh, Manhattan, Staten Island, um, and sue your landlord for illegally locking you out. You can sue your landlord for emergency repairs. Now, emergency repairs now is very limited before you can sue them for any of the issues you have in your apartment, whether it's uh, mice and roaches, mold, cracked ceilings. Right now, they're limiting it to very emergent situations, so probably uh, heat and hot water problems. If you're having a severe mold issue, um, that's preventing you from using a room in your apartment. Um, we're still, you know, taking this day by day and seeing what the courts are hearing. And if courts don't want to hear that case when you file, they do give you an opportunity to present your case to determine whether your situation is an emergency case. Um, and then the courts will open for you. So basically, what happens is, um, if you have an attorney, you know, your attorney will appear virtually, like we're appearing here now. But if you know, you also have the opportunity to appear virtually if you prefer. If you're someone who doesn't have the capacity to appear virtually, um, you don't have a computer at home, um, or you don't have a smartphone that can do this, you can go to court. Um, they still have people working there. The court officers are still there. Some court personnel are there. And you will appear before a judge. The judge will appear virtually from their home. Um, and you can present your case to the court. Um, you know, From what we've seen so far, repairs are being done when you do serve your landlord. A lot of landlords are arguing that it's difficult for them to be able to do the repairs because they don't want their workers to get sick. Mm -hmm. um, while that is a valid argument, mm -hmm. it's the landlord's responsibility and whoever the landlord is hiring to make sure that those employees are protected and safe when they do their work. Um, because unfortunately they are considered essential workers in New York, so they are working. Um, if your landlord is bringing the super to the work, your landlord has to provide the super with the correct protective gear to make sure that the super isn't going to get sick and that you're not going to get sick from the super either from the work. Um, mm -hmm. And if the landlord is hiring an, an outside contractor for something like lead, for example, which needs a specialist to be removed, um, that company has to make sure that the lead worker um, is protected as well and that they're doing what they can to prevent any kind of spread or diseases happening from the home. Um, so those are your rights. You know, you, you can still sue your landlord, um, but landlords cannot sue you. So that's a good thing for now. That's very important. And I didn't think that the courts are open because accordingly, everything is closed, right? Yeah, actually, the um, funny, funny thing about the courts is that they're, you know, we're all trying to um, adjust to working from home. The courts are also trying to do their best to do that, too. And, you know, they're going to slowly start opening up the courts for more cases for cases that are currently pending. So cases, for example, that were ongoing before Corona and that have been put on hold because of it, they're starting to allow people to appear virtually on, on those cases. So, you know, we're, we're still working, you know, the judges and the courts are still working where we're all trying to get back in there. Have there been any cases um, of, of evictions? Have any landlords tried to evict anyone during the pandemic? I see this more so with private homes, for example, like maybe there's a two to three family, you know, home. Um, those are smaller landlords. Usually they're not folks that hire attorneys to do cases. And sometimes the people they rent to are not sophisticated, uneducated. They're the immigrant community that comes here from other countries and they don't know what their rights are. Um, they're afraid to cause a fuss. So if the landlord is telling them to leave, they'll leave. Or if the landlord changes the locks, then they don't really fight it and they leave. And it's unfortunate that happens, but it's still going on. Um, if that does happen to you or if it happens to a family member or a friend, they have rights regardless of their immigration status, regardless if they're working and able to pay rent or not. And they can sue the landlord and the landlord will be hit with massive fines. We're seeing um, fines ranging from $2,000 to $10,000 for illegal evictions. Oh uh, so tenants should worry about that and should be concerned and should look out for that and look out for their neighbors and the members of their community that that's happening to because if you evict people during this situation, where else are they going to go? They're going to go to shelters or they're going to live on the street and they're going to, you know, con the, the virus will continue to spread, um, which is why we have this moratorium on evictions and why it's important that people are able to stay home. Um, so definitely look out for that. But unfortunately, landlords, you know, not a lot, but some of them still are trying to evict their tenants. But what should tenants do to alleviate the rent burden? And also, what are the services provided by legal services, which you have mentioned in is what you do and what is the process to be able to sign up so to alleviate the burden of rent um if you're not working definitely apply for public assistance that should be the first thing that you do um if you got laid off because of corona then definitely also apply for unemployment benefits 
right now until the end of July at the very least, there's a big bump in unemployment and, and folks applying for unemployment, but also a big bump in the amount of money that people are able to get. Um, on top of whatever you're receiving from unemployment, they're also giving an additional $600 per week. So even if you know you're you weren't making that much, at least with the unemployment benefits you're getting, you will be able to have some sort of income in your household. Um, use that money as you wish, but if you can use it for your rent, I, I would recommend that you do so, or at least part of it for your rent, because like I said before, rent's not frozen and you can be sued for this once this is over. Um, Legal Services does have, like I said, our advice call in, so you can call our number um, and you'll be given a, an appointment with an advocate to talk about your rights, what you can do, whether it's applying for public benefits, applying for unemployment, um, we do help you with all of that. If you have an issue with housing where your landlord isn't making repairs, let's say for some reason your landlord decides to shut off the heat because he wants to save on expenses because you're not paying your rent, that's illegal and you can still sue your landlord for that and we can still help you with that. Um, so definitely call our, our hotline number is 917-661-4500. This is specifically for the Bronx, but you're in other boroughs, you can also call and they'll do their best to direct you to the borough where they, you can receive assistance from. Um, and you can give them a call and they'll, they'll, they'll do what they can to help you. Um, we staff our clinics twice a week, so you'll be getting a call back in one of those two days. Um, and hopefully that can help you kind of alleviate some of the rent burdens you have, alleviate some of the questions you may have about housing, um, and also talk about your rights as an employee who has lost your job. Atenodoro, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and providing all this useful information. Where can you be contacted? So you can reach me directly. Um, I am A. Gonzalez, A-G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z, -E at lsnyc.org. You can also reach me on behalf of the Dominican Bar Association at dominicanbarasoc at gmail.com. That's Dominican, D-O-M-I-N-I-C-A-N, bar, B-A-R, asoc, A-S-S-O-C, at gmail.com. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Please be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook at Bella Fashionistas, and also our media partner, BronxNet TV. To watch more of our programming, please visit us at www.bellasfashionistas.com and our media partner, BronxNet at www.bronxnet.org. Thank you so much. Take care. Be safe.